This fourth Sunday in Lent, the reading again comes from the fourth gospel, the gospel according to John, John chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. It's contained at the verse 16, perhaps the most famous verse in the Bible, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's a statement which is still used by translators into languages that are yet not known. It's one of the first ways of translating a new language. And so we can be reasonably convinced that of all the phrases throughout Scripture, it is this one verse, John chapter 3, verse 16, which appears in more translation than any other. Language is yet being discovered to this day. The British Foreign Bible Society still insists upon first translating that verse before the rest of the Bible. The passage comes after Jesus has had the extraordinary interview during the night time with Nicodemus. Nicodemus who becomes a disciple and then keeps his discipleship quiet. Indeed, we remember that at the foot of the cross, it is Nicodemus that goes off quietly, asking that he might be allowed to bury Jesus and therefore helps Joseph of Arimathea at Jesus' end of life, has become a secret disciple. He comes to Jesus by night, asking him how he can be born again. And part of Jesus' discourse with him that forms the third chapter of John's Gospel is about darkness and light. Light of the world is the way in which we think of Jesus, and throughout this passage from this morning's Gospel, we find the reflection on the difference between light and darkness. It reminds us almost immediately of the great prologue to the fourth Gospel, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, which is traditionally read on the night of the Incarnation at Christmas. We remember that God's light has come into the world. The light has not yet overcome the world, but it has not yet been overcome by darkness. Jesus comes as a light into our world, shedding light upon us and before our way. So we often pray for Jesus as the light of the world to scatter the darkness from before our path, that we too might walk in light. And during Lent, that seems to be an appropriate prayer that we might offer. We're told in Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 5, verse 12, that we are lights in the world and we are encouraged by Christ to shine as lights in the world. We too should go out. We too should show others something of God's light. We don't hide our light under the bushel. That would be of no use to anyone. But rather we blazon it out as best we can in whatever circumstance we find ourselves. Encourage that Jesus himself has done this before us and has also done this for us. The ancient distinction between darkness as a place inhabited by evil spirits and light being a place of good clearly lies at the heart of Jesus' teaching. This is not to say that in any way Jesus' teaching is somehow secondary to that of the pagan philosophers, but rather to suggest that Jesus accommodated his teaching so that he would be readily understood by a contemporary audience. And even in our own society, I think all of us know places of darkness, whether in our own lives or in the corporations that we see around us, and places of light. And we use a vocabulary that talks about shedding light on difficult subjects, of bringing light or bringing to light those things that have been hidden. All of those, in essence, are part of Christ's call to us. If we would seek for truth, and if we would seek to establish God's peace here on earth, we need to bring to light those things that are kept in darkness, whether in our own lives, those things, sins of commission and omission of which we are embarrassed and of which we are guilty, or whether in the society in which we live and work. Whistleblowers across society often gain a bad name, but without them, many of the most appalling corporate and indeed individual acts would not go reported. We need to whistleblow our own life and throughout Lent to look at those parts of our lives of which we are afraid, of which we are embarrassed, and to ask and seek for God's forgiveness. That can be done through the Ministry of Reconciliation in church, or it can be done privately in our own hearts, but it needs to be done if we would be honest in our following after Christ. Christ, who is the light of the world, draws others to him that their light too might be united with his. We cannot follow if we surround ourselves with darkness or if we are unwilling to seek for the light in our own lives.